Hey everyone, today we're revisiting the UCS Venator class Republic attack cruiser. So like what I did with the course on guard gunship, today we're going to be modifying the Venator in a few different ways, two in fact. And what could we change about what I think is already a fantastic LEGO Star Wars set? Well, the first modification is actually going to be a fairly simple one. We're going to be swapping out these dark red bridges on the top side with light bluish gray. For those of you who don't know, the dark red signifies the flagship or the command ship of the fleet. So this modification is basically turning the Venator into what we normally see throughout the Clone Wars and Revenge of the Sith. I still really like the flagship design with the dark red bridges, but if you want to go in and modify it, it's fairly simple. So in order to do this mod, you're going to use the instruction booklet specifically at the backside and figure out all the different parts that are utilized on the bridge in dark red. Use the set numbers that are included on the backside and then type those in on Lego's Pick a Brick site or Bricklink, either or works. Now on Pick a Brick, you have this option called View Pieces and More Colors. When clicking that, you'll see all the available colors. And so in this case, you're gonna be choosing the light bluish gray version. Just repeat the process for all the pieces included on the bridge. You can use Bricklink or Pick a Brick to do this, but I think Pick a Brick's gonna be slightly cheaper. Once you have acquired your parts, all you have to do then is swap out the bridges. It's a fairly simple process, nothing complicated here. I bought all new parts, including the bottom plate, so I could easily swap the two. This is an option that if you want to go with, you can, or you can save some money and just get the top side of the parts and not all of them. And so here's the final result. As you can see, the Venator now looks more like a normal Venator. I still like the dark red, but I have to say it is really cool seeing the Venator with the light bluish gray. It also makes a little bit more sense why Lego went with the dark red. It certainly adds a little bit more pop to the Venator. Now, I also want to mention that while switching out the bridge color is accurate to what you see in Star Wars The Clone Wars, this doesn't inherently automatically make it an accurate version of what you see from Revenge of the Sith. To make this Lego Venator more accurate, you'd have to move the open circle fleet symbol for further upwards as well as making the dark red line one bigger strip. But these are easy modifications that you could probably do yourself. The next modification is turning this Republic cruiser into an Imperial Venator, like what we see at the end of Revenge of the Sith and that very brief scene showing Tarkin, Palpatine, and Vader on board this grayed out Venator or Star Destroyer now that is pretty awesome looking in my opinion. Now that isn't the only time that we see the grayed out Venator. It also makes an appearance in the Bad Batch, specifically at the end of season one with that heartfelt finale of the Venators destroying Kamino, man. That still sits with me to this day. So my point here is that this Imperial version of the Venator is actually a modification you might want to consider, and it's not super complicated either. Just like the bridges, we're just swapping pieces out with different colors, in this case, more light bluish gray. So what does it look like? Here it is. So I've got to say, it doesn't actually look that bad. I kind of dig the Imperial Venator. It, it definitely has a vibe for it. You know, it, it definitely makes me feel like I'm back at Revenge of the Sith at the end. Like, I don't know, it, it actually looks pretty sweet. I guess it's maybe that iconic size and style of the Venator that just works with this Lego model. Like, I actually dig this thing. Like, I'm almost tempted to get a fourth Venator and color convert it. So I have an Imperial Venator. I have my fleet of Republic Venators. But that's crazy. I don't need to spend that amount of money unless you out there just have that much expendable money, then sure, go for it. Get as many Venators you want, convert them to Imperial, convert the you know, bridges to different colors. My point being is that what's cool about this set is you actually have more than the one option that LEGO gives you if you want to customize and change this ship. And speaking of which, I went to great lengths for one of the toughest modifications in human history for a LEGO Star Wars set, and that is changing out a three-piece micro gunship. It is now an Imperial gunship. All jokes aside, I think this color conversion honestly really just goes to show how well this set was designed. Even when there's basically no color and it's just all gray, it still looks really good in its design and form. But we're not complete yet. We still need to do a little bit more swapping out. So we're going to get rid of that 20th anniversary brick, Rex and Yularen, and we're going to put in Vader, Tarkin, and of course, Emperor Palpatine, or in this case, Darth Sidious. I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty awesome that the display stand accommodates these three figures pretty well and actually almost looks like a whole new set. When you include the figures and you have the Venator all grayed out like this, 
I'm shocked. This looks like another Lego Star Wars set that you could find at the stores and buy yourself again for $650. It's really cool that this is a neat option that you could go with. I'm still a fan of the Republic Venator, but let me know what you think down in the comments below.